what I was trying to do was um, I was going to come up with some really nice numbers, but um, because I just tried to do it real quickly, it just happened. Okay, so what are we going to do for this question? Now, this question was a similar question from 2017. Uh, give me a second. Man, these guys are loud today, eh? Okay, look. So, with these types of questions, what's a really good idea is just to do a rough sketch. Okay, a rough sketch of what the question's actually asking. Because when you draw a diagram, things just become a little bit more easier. So, at the moment, what you got is you've got a tangent to the graph. So, basically, this green part is your graph now looking at it it's a parabola so what i'm going to do is i've got a parabola like that it's a positive parabola so that's why i'm going to i'm going to draw like this now it says it there's a tangent and it has a gradient of two it's positive two so that means the tangent is going to look like this where it has a gradient of two now it says it passes through the point 2a we don't know where this tangent is. All we know is this tangent has a gradient of 2. And we know that there's a point 2a. It could be there or it could be there. We don't know. We actually don't know. Okay, now the question is actually asking you to find the value of a. Now, this is a calculus paper. Either you're differentiating or you're integrating. So my first step thing that I would tell you guys is why don't you differentiate that should be the first step. So I'm going to do this question the whole way through, and then I'm going to give you guys a similar question like this so you guys can actually have a go. So I'm going to write f dash, actually no, I'm going to write f of x first. So f of x is 2x squared minus 4x. When I differentiate this, I get 4x minus 4. Generally speaking, this might just get you like a half an achieved, okay? But the reason I say half an achieved is because uh, like lately I've seen like they want a bit more in an excellence question before they give you the like an achieved grade. So I guess what you can do is you can actually look at the gradient, which is 2. And you can actually find out what the value of x is when the gradient is 2. So when we put this, 2 equals 4x minus 4. Rearrange it, we get 4x is equal to 2 plus 4, 6 equals to 4x, and x equals to 1.5. Okay? What we've just discovered is this point right here. Now, we know we can cross this one off because when it's a tangent, we've just figured out that the x value is 1.5. We can figure out what the y value is. Because what we could do is we can find out what f of 1.5 is because that's going to give you the y value. So I've got 2x squared minus 4x and then I replace it with 1.5 squared minus 4 times 1.5. When I do this, I get, I hope I'm right, 4.5 minus 6 which equals negative 1.5. So that means this point here is negative 1.5. All right? That much we have got so far. Now it's asking us to find the value of a, but the this this tangent it actually passes through the point 2a. All right? There is Almost, I would say there's so many different ways you can actually do this from this point onwards. You could find the equation of the straight line and then substitute x equals to 2 and find out what a is. Or you know the gradient is 2, so then you can actually say the difference between this point and this point, the gradient is 2. So that's another way of doing it as well. So there's quite a couple of ways you can do this. I'll show you guys both. So the first method is coming up with an equation. So I've got my points. My points is 1.5 and negative 1.5. I know what the gradient is. That's 2. So I can write the equation of a straight line. So I got y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. 
So I've got y minus negative 1.5 equals 2 times x minus 1.5. And what ends up happening is I've got 2x minus 3. And when I rearrange it, I get 2x minus 4.5. Now that's the equation of the red line that we just saw. All right, the tangent, the equation of that. But it tells you that it goes through the point 2a. So we go in here. It goes through the point 2a, which means we just find the y value. So we're going to go y equals 2x minus 4.5. Y equals 2 times 2 minus 4.5, which ends up being 4 minus 4.5, which equals to negative 0 0.5. So then we can say a equals negative 0 0.5. I'll reduce. Oh, have I gone too big? Yeah, I'm sorry it's a bit bit small, but I did you guys just follow the steps at least of how to do it? So can I give you guys a similar question like this, but just change the numbers up and get you guys to do it? Yeah? Um, so look, I mean, I'll, I'll go through the idea again, like just to have a look at it. So first step is this part here, kind of drawing. Drawing it and just seeing what it is that the question is actually asking you what do you have and then what are you looking for the second step is always this part here differentiate okay you are in a calculus paper you got to differentiate it you know what a gradient is use that to then find out what the x value is and then you can find out what the y value is come up with the equation of the line and then get the final point okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this question but i'm going to change the numbers and I'm going to get you guys the same question for you guys to try it, all right? So just give me a second. Can I get you guys to try this question, please? All right, I've kind of kept things the same, so you can kind of just follow the same idea. So kind of, kind of following the same idea, what I'm going to do is the first step is I'm going to differentiate f of x. So when I differentiate f of x, I get 4x minus 5. Uh, and it says that it has a gradient of 3, so I can put down 3 is equal to 4x minus 5. Rearranging this, 4x equals to 8, and x is equal to 2. So once I've figured out that point, so remember this, that's my parabola right there, that's my tangent, and that value is 2 right now. i got to figure out what the y value is. So I'll find what f of 2 is. So that's going to be 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2. So that's 8 minus 10, which is negative 2. So that point right there is negative 2. This point, which is 3a, that's right there. Can I show you that other method I was talking about? You know how I said find the straight line and then substitute it? But the other way you can find out is, what, what do you know about the straight line's gradient? Is it? This blue line's gradient, what is it? Three. So, if this gradient is three, can't you then say that this is the second point and this is the first point? So what I'm trying to say is like, this can become x2 and y2. This is x1 and y1. So you know how gradient is change in y divided by change in x. So this is the other way you can do this. You can say that the gradient is 3, y2 is a, y1 is minus 2 over x2 which is 3 minus x1 which is 2. So then you would write this as 3 equals a plus 2 divided by 1. So a equals to 1. Yeah? That's another way of doing it as well. If you were doing the equation of a straight line, then your gradient was 3, the point was 2 and negative 2. So y minus negative 2 equals 3 times x minus 2. So you got y plus 2 equals 3x minus 6. y is equal to 3x minus 8. 
So now, when I substitute 3 in there, it'll tell me what a is. So y is equal to 3 times 3 minus 8, which is 9 minus 8, which is 1. So therefore, a is equal to 1. Now guys, this question here is an excellence question. All right. Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> This is, uh, all the questions I'm going to show you guys today are excellence questions because I, th I think having something like this in your kitty is quite good because if a question does something like similar like this pops up, then that's like a good seven points that's sussed out there. And even if you get something wrong halfway through this, you can get like two points for an achieved or five points for a merit. Okay, so that's why I'm focusing quite a bit on this types of question. All right, next question. What I'd like you guys to do is this one here. Okay, I'm gonna, as usual, I'm gonna give you guys about a few minutes to try this. I'm actually gonna get you guys to try this. I'm not gonna show you guys this. And after that, I will go through the full answers with you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna give you about four minutes for this question. Okay. So in this question, think about what you've been given. Great. What you guys have been given is, you guys have been given this. These are all the information you've been given. f dash of x is 2x minus a. All right. We've been given the point 2, 1. Now, this is a crucial little point here. First off, we can say that f of 2 equals to 1. Do you guys agree with that? Because, you know, that's what the point is. The y value is uh, 1 when x equals to 2. The other thing that's really, really important in this question is this little word right here, turning point. Because it says the point 2, 1 is the turning point. Now, if it's a turning point, what's the gradient? Zero. Zero. So what we also know is f dash of 2 equals to 0. Is that correct? What the hell is happening here? Did I forget to record that one? Oh, well, it's all right. So what do we got? We got f of 2 equals 1, and we know that because it's a turning point, f dash of 2 equals to 0. So here's the things that we can actually do. If I integrate this, then f of x is equal to, what would it be? x squared 2 over 2 minus ax plus c. So then f of x is x squared minus ax plus c. This question is really weird. Okay, okay, okay. What are we going to do next? Well, we've got two unknowns, right? We've got, we can't, we can't figure out, we need to figure out what a is. We also need to figure out what c is. But here's the thing. Go back to this clue right here. It says f dash of 2 equals to 0. That means I can take this equation and go f dash of 2 equals 2 times 2 minus a. But because f dash of 2 equals to 0, can't I just say 0 equals 4 minus a? And then that means a is equal to 4. Isn't that true? And then if a is equal to 4, then I can say f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus c. And if I want to figure out what c is, I could actually use f of 2 equals to 1. Because that point is 2, 1, I can say that 1 equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus c. And what this ends up being... So 4 minus 8 plus c, 1 equals negative 4 plus c, and c is equal to 5. Now if you go back to the question, it says find the equation of the function. We can write f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 5. What do you reckon, merit or excellence? I did say that we're doing excellence questions. So yes, this is an excellence question. Okay? But 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 I guess the key the key important point that you guys need to know 
is that turning point there. Because whenever you see a turning point, you can say that the gradient is actually equal to zero. Do you want to try one similar to this? Yep. Just that part? Okay, I will give you guys a similar question like this so you guys can have a go by yourself. Okay, guys, similar question like this. I want you guys to try it now, please. And I'm going to give you guys about three to four minutes, not more than that. Just keeping an eye on the time, and I've got two more questions to do like this. One, This one, because you already know what to do, uh, what do we have? We said it was a turning point at 1, 3. So we can say that F dash of 1 equals to 0. So straight away, we can figure out what uh, A value is, because... 0 is equal to a times 1 minus 2. a minus 2 equals 0. So a is equal to 2. Then, we've got the gradient function, which is 2x minus 2. So f of x, when you integrate this, it's going to be x squared minus 2x plus c. We also know that it goes through the point 1, 3. So we can substitute that in there. So we're going to get 3, 1 squared, minus 2 times 1 plus c so we got 3 equals 1 minus 2 plus c 3 equals negative 1 plus c so c is equal to positive 4 so the equation is y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4 I hope you guys got that awesome let's go to the next question Okay, this one here, I'm not going to lie, this one here is a nasty question. Okay, I am lying. The reason it's nasty is because of the numbers that I chose. But usual drill, differentiate and put the pieces together to try and figure out the value of P. Okay? Give you guys about four minutes. I'm not going to do another question like this, guys, because I want to finish this question and I've got one more question, another style. Get you guys to try it out. Got a parabola that you got a parabola that looks like this. Um, I don't know. I don't know which part x equals to two is. So x equals two could be here, like this. I'm going to choose a different color, or x equals two could be like this. But all you know, no matter which direction it's cutting it at, eventually it passes through the point 1, 3. Now, I'm, again, I'm not sure where that point 1, 3 is. It could be anywhere. That's all the hint I'm going to give you guys. But what you do know is if it goes on this side, that point is there is 2, or if it goes on this side, that x value is 2. So that's what it means by when it says the tangent for this graph where x equals to 2 passes through the point. So the point 1, 3 is actually not, this green point here is not 1, 3, but that's when x equals to 2. The 1, 3 could be on the line anywhere else. Okay? Just have a go. See how far you can actually get with it, and then I'll um, go through the answer. Because we only got about 10 minutes left. Um, have a look at what I actually end up doing to try and figure out what this is. Everybody should be able to do the first step. The first step, whoa, didn't realize I'm writing with a highlighter, is f dash of x, which is going to be 2px plus 4. Okay, that's the first step. Now the next step is we know that this particular, it, it actually goes through 2. So we can find out what the gradient at 2 is. So I'm going to put f dash of 2. So the gradient at 2 is 2p times 2 plus 4. So then I can say the m, m value is 4p plus 4. Is that okay so far? All right. Now, here's the thing, though. We also, what else do we know? We don't, we know, we know. We can actually find out what the y value is. All right, we can find out the y value because we know x is equal to 2. So I'm going to find out what the y value is because that's going to be p times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 5. So f of 2 equals 4p plus 8 minus 5. 
which is 4p plus 3. So at the moment, I've got a gradient. My gradient is equal to 4p plus 4. I have two points. My first point is 1, 3. And my second point is 2, 4p plus 3. Do you guys see that? Because I've got two points, right? And I'm, my gradient is between those two points. Then what I can say is this is x1, y1, x2, y2. I can basically say gradient equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So gradient is equal to 4p plus 4, which equals y2, which is 4p plus 3, minus 3 divided by x2, which is 2. This does not look promising. I think I might have chosen a stupid point. Give me a second. So you got 4p plus 4. And then you got 4p over 1. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The problem is I'm going to get 4p plus 4 equals 4p and end up with 4 equals to 0. So this is a problem. This is my mistake. I do apologize. The reason is because I think I might have picked a point because this is what happens when I try to make up a question just before that point can't be one and three it has to be something else so look what i'll do is i'll see if i can create another question like this that actually works so when i see you guys the next time we'll actually work through this question again okay uh there's one more question by the way if you want to have a go at this at home you can but i will actually do this later on and when i upload the video it should be up there okay thank you all right, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to go back to this question here. I'm just wondering what would happen if I change this number from 1, 3, and instead of 1, 3, I use 0, 3. Sorry about this, you know, sometimes you just play around with numbers and you think it's going to work, but and then suddenly it doesn't. So if I go back and change this to 0, and what would end up happening is this becomes 0. So I'm going to rub out all of this and just redo this whole thing again. So then we've got 4p plus 4 equals 4p over 2. And then, so then this can be written as 4p plus 4 equals 2p. And then rearranging it, we get 4 equals minus 2p. And then p equals 4 divided by negative 2. p is equal to negative 2. So sorry about that, guys, because... Um, you know, sometimes you just come up with questions and on the spot you think it's going to work, but um, as you go through it, you realize your mistakes and it doesn't work. So, you know, originally in this question, I actually said the parabola was going to look like a, a smiley face, but in reality, we got negative P, sorry, P equals negative 2, which means it's an upside down um, parabola. Anyway, that's that question. Let's go to the last question here. So what we have is we've got... Uh, we've got, what do we have? We've got an equation of a line, which is y equals to 3x plus k, and we know that it's a tangent to this. So that's a parabola. That's a straight line, which has a gradient of 3. That's what we know that from, and we're trying to figure out what the value of k is. So first thing is I'm going to differentiate it. So f dash of x is equal to 2x plus 4. Now I know that the, where the tangent meets at that point, the gradient is 3, because it says from here, 3x plus k. So I'm going to put 3 equals 2x plus 4, and rearranging this, I get negative 1 equals 2x, x equals negative half. So I've just figured out what this point there is, it's negative half. Now I need to work out what the y value is, so I need to find out f of negative half, so I'm going to get negative half squared plus 4 times negative half minus 1. Negative half squared is a quarter, plus 4 times negative 2 is going to be negative 2 minus 1. So I'm left with negative 2.75. So that's the value of y. So that's this point right here. And I've got a gradient, which is 3, and I've got the x and y value, so I need to figure out what the equation is. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. 
So y minus negative 2.75 equals 3 times x minus negative half. So I've got y plus 2.75 equals 3, x plus 0 0.5. So y plus 2.75 equals 3x plus 1.5. And then y equals 3x plus 1.5 minus 2.75. Therefore, y is equal to, I hope this is right, 3x minus 1.25. Okay, so that's basically it for this little session, guys. Uh, I do apologize about question number three where I kind of messed up with that. But hey, happens to the best of us, yeah? But that's basically it. Thank you, uh, and I will follow up with another tutorial later on.